I'm just reminding myself that it might be a cool idea to start doing a POV uh, a style of content where I find satisfaction not just in the um, vape related stuff but in the daily life of you know the true nature of a vlog um, but it will be catered more towards a particular style of POV where it's satisfying to watch in a weird in a weird way in in the same way that we're just fascinated with curious aspects of human nature and we never actually get a an intimate like never before seen insight into people's daily lives not in an effective way um and there's that weird fascination with people who have um, a tendency towards like neatness, for example, or organization, or uh, cleanliness, or just perfection, right? In everything they do in the world around them, it's satisfying to see examples of those kind of qualities, those qualities that are based on the the presentation of control of discipline of a pursuit towards perfection of mastery you are like for example i'm looking at my um working space right my desk it's got my computer on it I, i'll i'll show it in video form later on but the coming back to the idea the idea is what if it's a very simple process to just have a pov camera very small very light as best quality as you possibly can um so that it's just on your person it can be on your chest or on your shoulder um i don't really want to wear it on my head but maybe Maybe if it's small enough, it could be. I don't want it to draw the attention, though. And I think it's like with those um, Ray-Ban glasses, you know, the, the first-person perspective. Uh, I don't I don't know if the tech is there yet for first-person perspective to not look so jarring. Uh, anyway, that, that's, that's not a hidden there. I want, like, POV. And the... Content will allow people to completely unedited, um, raw, display glimpses of their life. So their home, uh, their daily chores and routines and maintenance and into preparation of food, into interacting with other people perhaps. It's like Big Brother, but, you know, you can follow anyone's life. So if this becomes some kind of sub-trend, right, on YouTube, that vlogs have become vlog 2.0 or 3.0 or whatever, and um, and now it's a, it's a new thing because people have found a way to connect with... Imagine if it's a big trend and... and then celebrities, maybe lower level celebrities or high level. I don't know. It depends on how <clears throat> open people are to the act of um, rebellion against their ego in being very open and honest and transparent about how you live your life. Open to scrutiny. You just, everything's open, right? Um, that kind of act of defiance is going to be in line with the trajectory that we're going towards, I think, or at least we sorely need it. And the, and the direction is acknowledging the grip of the ego experience where we all feel so insecure and judged and entrapped in conditions that we must all meet. Um, whether it's in our appearance or or how we conduct ourselves 
or what we feel about ourselves and what others feel about us and vice versa. And it's all based on old concepts of proprietary and conditioning. And that's the way it's always been and that's the way it will always be, which is false. And we, we know that we are resisting against these falsehoods that have been entrenched throughout generation upon generation and we're now <laughs> we're now running away from uh on a tangent anyway my mind obviously wanders big picture stuff this is nothing new i've got to <laughs> remind myself that this is a voice note yeah it's my self-expression but also at the same time it is fully with the mind set of having having a possibility open in front of me with the big picture in mind. And I don't know what the big picture is entirely. I get glimpses of it. A glimpse of a big picture, what if, possibility. And it's led by this inspiration that's coming through in glimpses. And I just, I find that I have to make steps towards that in the background as a project B. Um, but then it, uh, pro, like priority one in my life is, is society telling me that I need to get a job and I need to make money and I need to be successful. And those are all words from my ego. And the more that I uncover these aspects of self, like ego, the more you're able to identify that as a voice within you. And it can be an echo of an expectation that from the past or an expectation of the future. And these are stuck in time, which only exists to the ego. Because the ego somehow has you know, created all of these concepts and have and entrapped us, enthralled us within these notions. And it's only through awareness, through making a journey, through listening to inspiration, can we keep the options open for, I oh, know, life doesn't have to be like this. No, no, life can be whatever we want, but we haven't awakened those abilities yet. You can see the patterns that are oh, all throughout mankind. We've shown more of a dominant um, behavioral pattern of these aspects, the aspects of the, the ego and, you know, survival and self. And, uh, and however deep you want to go in, in anthropology, it, uh, it doesn't matter. We, we see, we know that we are a byproduct of these aspects once we're more familiar with these aspects. And then we look at other aspects that we'd rather attune to, we'd rather bring to the surface, and we don't really know much about those. And so I think we're reaching the boundaries of ego and mind's um, comprehension. An awareness. It's it's as if these aspects are just bubbles within us that are floating around and each are trying to take up more space. And with awareness and guidance from, let's say, inspiration, and we're able to just kind of with faith with curiosity, with openness and humility and bravery, we can just wander into those conceptual spaces within our minds and within our experience and just explore and keep an ear out for the answers, keep our eyes out for the clues, keep our bodies awake for the alternative options or the truth that you're feeling right now. There's, there's so much power within, within all of these, but only in a higher state rant do, um, 
do the images start to appear in my mind and I just have to try and translate them as best I can. Like some kind of artist, like some kind of, um, yeah. But my medium isn't through brush and paint. It isn't through songwriting. It's mostly through the concepts that come through and I can't find an outlet for them. It feels like that. <laughs> this all feels kind of like that. And um, that is existing within the grace side, from the high side, from the creative side, uh, the yellow side. And that that side is what I'm trying to I'm trying to understand it as. It feels like it's an aspect, and I've named it high or grace. I think grace is the name of the of the character trait that I'm portraying on this. And grace can be whatever I want grace to be, in order to embody this aspect that works for me. And so this is the way I see it. I'm attuning to high, which is another aspect. High comes through and has more ability with our entire cognition, with our physical cognition, with our mental cognition. And it just kind of takes over more control of this avatar that we call our self, this physical body, this manifestation the name that you go by, <clears throat> that's yourself. And then you realize, oh, there's this like element within me. There's this aspect, this, uh, this driving force or this like personality who is able to commandeer and um, pilot this body that you have. And so that's a, a, a kind of weird introduction to an explanation about why when you're in a higher frequency, a higher state, it feels like you are a different person. And I've noticed this in the way that I do things and the way that I think things and the way that I act and respond. It's like I become a different person. And I'm attributing that to oh that's what's happening when you attune to a higher frequency you're letting high take over for a bit ego is still there mind is still there they're still trying to um take back um control but they usually resonate and operate in a lower frequency as far as i'm aware and high works in a higher frequency it's towards a higher form of self. And so you do actually become a different person because you're allowing high to take over a bit. And I'm characterizing high as Grace, who apparently is coming to me like, you know, the sister I never had. Um, an older sister, somewhat of a role model and somewhat of um, a compadre, you know? And this is just for me, right? This is how I feel high needs to be characterized to me to help me be a better person, to give me some guidance. Uh, I've mentioned that in a previous post, but I understand that if anyone is listening, it's highly unlikely that they'll be following from the beginning, word for word, and remember all of this madness, uh, this nonsense. <sighs> I've had many thoughts in between voice notes that I obviously haven't talked about or mentioned, and it's still a very awkward process to to come out with these ramblings, but I do feel like they hold a lot of truth, and it's only when you're able to allow your mind and your ego to accept or at least look at these notions, listen to them, 
and try and pick out the patterns within so that you can mentally comprehend this map of terminologies. And then you go, oh, oh, this seems more grounded in, you know, pattern recognition and truth seeking. Um, yes, it's not grounded on fact, but if we realize that the scientific method is based on fact and the, the, the method that I'm just exploring, I'm not saying anything is fact or fiction. I'm just going with what I feel is more correct. And I'm, I'm, I'm attuning to aspects of myself that I haven't paid attention to. And I realize they've been there in the background. They're always accessible through practice and through focus, through awareness. And all of these terminologies and the practices themselves are all starting to come alive. And they happen to do so more often when I'm in a higher frequency. So then... All of these realizations are coming through all the time. And it's building this, this tapestry, this map of understanding in my psyche, in my mind. And so my mind is like, oh, this all makes kind of more sense. The, the more pieces of the jigsaw that come together, it's actually feeling more confident. And it might just be rigged. It might just be all make-believe, but uh, I'm curious enough and I guess desperate enough because I want change in my life, in my future, and for other people too. I want to improve things. I've always wanted to improve things. So if I see that fundamentally there could be something, a grand opportunity and possibility to manifest a reality towards your preference and if your preference is towards a higher frequency way of living rather than a lower frequency way of living then why would you not try why would you not keep your options open and go explore the what if part of you that it what if voice just allow them more to come to the surface, you know, and notice that aspect f kind of f flaring up within you at times. Allow that aspect to come through. Um, allow intuition and inspiration to, to come through and for you to I don't know, create some more space to allow them to exist. Whether inspiration comes through and says, oh, I think you should maintain that a bit more. I think you're letting yourself go. Or, oh, I think you should get in touch with that friend because you haven't talked to them for a while. And now that you are thinking about them, you remember that they didn't seem quite right and there was something off about them. And maybe no one has reached out maybe no one has noticed and so you think oh okay i think i should do that and you have all of these thoughts of grace well i'm i'm characterizing them as grace it's a it's a place of love and empathy and connection and intuition it's a place where understandings come from a knowing and a truth of understanding and that's outside the spectrum outside the realm of the mind because the mind just wants to yeah wants to know and understand but it does it through ego's way of trying to structure and factualize everything um and it that kind of method the scientific method unfortunately is completely silencing the voice of the unknown the inexplicable the magical, the spiritual, the not able to prove yet, because it's always a step ahead. And it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of that guardian of the blind. And um, yeah, I think 
there's a danger of going too far into that, of course, because we are built to identify risk and we're able to kind of stay away from um, self-annihilistic tendencies or patterns. And so if there's too much risk, then there's too much danger. And so therefore, um, we're in a danger of losing ourselves physically or mentally or socially. Um, and those kind of deaths. Or, yeah, or, or self to self. You might lose yourself. Um, those kind of dangers are what scares us. And uh, so it's best to try and stay well clear of those. But in the process, I think what we've inadvertently done as a society, as we evolved, as we um, became more comfortable and reliant on the structures and the infrastructures and the institutions that we've built as a society now, as a developed world, I think we've become so comfortable with those. And so we have fully been so enthralled in the dominion of the ego and the mind aspects predominantly, that our story is now trying to always, always, if you look back through all of the stories that are about magic and creativity and wonder and, you know, um, the unfathomable becoming all true or hints of it and weird paradigms where it's so convincing that it could be possible if things were a different way mm -hmm. and from one small action you can get a ginormous tidal wave of change we have that potential we've seen it we we know we can it's just it's a very fine line between um your movement and your line of thought to be handcuffed and wrapped up in a straitjacket and shoved in a prison because it's so easy to like label someone as crazy and that's just another tactic and we all know the stories of of whistleblowers and um, people who are anti-establishment and um, or anti-whatever like that the, you know that they're they're characters who are fighting for our benefit and um, and the way that they're always discredited and treated the same patterns are there the same patterns of um, listen to your um better judgment these people were insane and they were going to take you down and yeah it's so easy to go down that kind of path that's uh that's definitely a, a, a tactic that's been well used and it works it, it still works so they'll keep using it uh, yeah any radical thoughts always fall into the that kind of trap. Uh, but how can you circumnavigate that? How can a person, once they're convicted of being insane or being psychopathic or being whatever, uh, how can that person convince the world otherwise if they've been labeled by a doctor? You know, it's one of those entrapments that just, it's so... It's so powerful, so simple, so established, so easy to do. You just, you, you click your fingers and you're able to be um, silenced and condemned. <laughs> and that's always a risk of people who have wandering, open thoughts and open questions. And I'm going off on one. I should get back to my chores. Uh, but the idea came to me about POV um, video content that's pleasing because you get an open and true insight into people's lives, anyone's lives. 
So if it becomes a trend, imagine seeing the day in life of your celebrity just because they are also jumping on the bandwagon of, of, of a social media trend, of a type of content, which is very, very easy for people to do. Um, we would rather use our phones to do that, but um, I think it, another POV camera, whatever it is, maybe it is your phone, maybe they just get used to it. That would be cool and easy. And I'm wanting to try it. 